In this one, I'm going to show you how to create these moody cinematic edits in Lightroom. Now the word cinematic is definitely thrown around far too much these days. All I mean by cinematic is drawing inspiration from cinema or film, especially when it comes to color grading or how we're going to edit in Lightroom. I'm sure when we say cinematic, there's probably a few movies that really stand out for you that have really specific color grades on them. So for me, things like the old Blade Runner movie, even the newer one, things like anime, even movies like The Dark Knight or The Joker have these really distinctive edits so that's what we're going for, these really distinctive looks in our photo edits. Just a reminder, I do have a whole bunch of presets for sale where you can achieve these looks quickly and easily. Remember when using presets, it is best to always make these slight adjustments. So watching videos like this will help you get the most out of your photos, even if you are using presets. All right, let's jump into Lightroom. This is the image we're going to be editing. Remember some of our cinematic things like at night, like snow, this smoke, this atmosphere, and kind of shooting at the light in this instance, giving almost a silhouette to our subject here, kind of creates this cinematic feel already. So remember when you're taking your photos, a lot of this cinematic feel can be created as well. To start with, you can see I have increased the overall exposure. So our basic adjustments, I'm not gonna do much here. I'm just gonna bring my highlights down, get some of that detail back, maybe boost the shadows a little bit, bring my whites down a fraction and my blacks down a fraction as well. So only slight adjustments here, I'm not spending much time on it. We're gonna create a lot of the look of this edit in the tone curve and also our color grading. So we'll jump to that and spend a bit more time there because that's where the magic's gonna happen. One thing that I find to give my images a little bit more of a cinematic feel, sometimes a little bit more of a film look as well is actually by softening them. So this will give you almost a pro mist, black mist type vibe as well. This is done by reducing that clarity. You can see it just takes some of that detail away softens it a little bit. But for this one, I'm actually, with this snow, I wanna retain some of that. So I'm gonna pump up the texture a lot more than I usually would. You can just see how that's kind of adding that detail back into the snow. And if I wanna increase color, I tend to go for vibrance, oversaturation, a little bit less destructive. Let's jump into the tone curve. So if you're not familiar with the tone curve, I do have a video on this. Some of these adjustments I'll go through quite quickly. So go watch that first if you're not sure what I'm doing here. But our overall curve is first, I'm gonna add in three points and just create a slight S curve. So that's gonna darken those shadows, brighten our highlights just a fraction. That middle point, I can probably leave about where it is, but I'm gonna add in a little bit of fade to our blacks, about 20, and just cut off our clipping highlights a little bit, sorry, our whites. And we're gonna do a similar thing on the colored curve. So this is where you can add in color to your image with the tone curve, but it's also gonna affect the overall tone still as well. So again, we're gonna add an S curve. I'm not gonna spend much time on this because I'm gonna come back to it in a sec, but just a very slight curve there copy and I'm going to paste that to the rest of the colors as well. So these three curves you can see it's just added a little bit too much purple into the image. I just want to check my white balance because I haven't changed it at all yet either. So I'm just going to bring that a little bit this way and a little bit towards green. Come back to my tone curve and just tweak these a little bit. So I just want a little bit more kind of cyan in those shadows, just bring that down a fraction. Come across to our green. I want a little bit more green in this image. So this is more our mid-tones here, just add a fraction there. Maybe add just a fraction into those highlights as well. And I'm pretty happy with these adjustments. If I turn the overall tone curve off, you can see how much mood we've already added to this image. We've already got a moody atmospheric <laughs> edit happening. So the next thing I want to do where our colors are really going to shine is in the color grading tab. So this is where you can create a really unique look to your edits. Again, I do have a video on color grading tab if you're unfamiliar with this, but basically we can select and add colors individually to our shadows, midtones, highlights, and also global. So with our shadows, I'm going to start with by adding just a bit of probably a little bit of aqua here to kind of pick your amount. I usually hit shift and then you can just slide on the amount. So this is really handy. Or command, you can kind of play around with just the color. Some handy shortcuts. So again, jump across to mid-tones. I wanna add in a little bit of blue to my mid-tones. 
Again, hit shift and we can just control the overall amount there. Just wanna add in a little bit, come across to our highlights and probably add in a little bit of orange, yellowy orange to this one. So about there. Again, just hit shift, we can control just the saturation, the amount. Now, I just wanna add in a little bit of green to the global as well. So that's about where I want, but I'm just gonna, again, hit shift and just reduce that. So probably only about there. If I turn off the color grading tab, you can see we just have this kind of slight greeny aqua color cast coming across our image now. So this is, as I said, where you can create these really unique looks. Personally, this is pretty consistent with what I would add in for this type of image, but you can play around with, see what works with your images. So before we make some more individual adjustments at HSL, I wanna come down to calibration now. So adjustments in camera calibration can make a really big change to your overall image. So often I'll do this first and then go refine them in HSL. So I'm gonna make this a little bit more aqua. You can see already it's a little bit heavy. <laughs> We're gonna go and fix this up later on though. This is what I would usually do to get the kind of feel in my images that I like. You don't have to do similar here, but it would probably usually be something like that. So you can see if I turn it off, how I've just tweaked those colors a bit. Let's go into HSL for our final color adjustments. So basically starting with saturation, I'm gonna take a lot of the saturation out of this image, starting with purple, magenta, bring those blues back a little bit aqua and green back a little bit, orange back just a fraction. So you can see just taking some of the color out so far. And that's largely what I like to do, remove some of the color rather than increase it. Jump across to hue. I wanna make this blue even more aquary, nice and cyan. I think almost at that green point, it looks there. Just tidy it up a little bit. Pretty happy with that. Pretty much the only other color in this one now is orange, but usually I would push my purples towards blue magenta towards red personally i just don't like having a lot of pink and purple in my images so that's why i'll tweak those either direction the other one here obviously our orange i just want to maybe tweak that slightly towards yellow and we're going to jump across to luminance remember this is how colors reflect light so if we bring it down which i want to do to my blues it's going to reflect less light orange i want to increase a little bit it's going to reflect more light so I'm pretty happy with that. You can see before adjustments in HSL, after. So the last thing I like to do for this type of image is put in a little bit of a vignette, make our subject stand out a little bit more by darkening the corners. And usually it will just make it feel a little bit more cinematic, draw you into the image a bit more. Last of all, now this is probably the best tool of all to really make your images stand out is our masking tools. Basically what I wanna do here, this light from the crossing sign, I wanna increase that and I wanna increase the smoke, the light behind the subject. So let's do that first. I'm gonna grab a radial gradient, pop that in behind the subject there and I'm gonna go subtract, select subject. It's found my subject really well. Now I can create this light behind my subject. So this is such a good feature. I use this all the time. So exposure I've increased. I'm gonna make that really soft by bringing down the clarity and a little bit of a haze. Maybe bring that tint a little bit towards green. It's just a little bit strong. So I like to go in, make those adjustments and then we can come up to amount. You can see my feathers at 100 to make that a really gradual application of those settings. And then I just like to tweak the amount. So there's none, I probably just want it about there. So you can see without it, just increase that light behind our subject a little bit. In the same way, we could select our subject, maybe darken them a little bit, make it a real silhouette, add in a little bit of clarity and texture. And again, just play around with the amount. So last of all, I'm just gonna create this dramatic effect on this light. So again, I'm gonna grab a radial gradient for that gradual application of settings and basically in the direction that this light would shine. So you could do this with like a brush as well, but a radial gradient will work nicely. So again here, negative texture. I didn't really need that, but negative clarity, a bit of haze you can see there is kind of the thing to really get this effect of light and increase my exposure, maybe boost the color back into it, bring it towards blue and green. Now we have this really strong effect from the light. I might just bring it down a fraction, maybe widen it a little bit just gives it that really cinematic look. You don't want it too heavy to distract from kind of your subject. So here we have before and after 
a really moody and yes, hopefully cinematic edit. Let's jump across to the next one. So this is the edit we're gonna try and be creating on this one. I'm gonna reset it and let's get cracking. So on this one, the first thing I need to do is adjust the white balance and exposure. You can see it's just very orange. Don't always rely on your white balance. You can see if I hit auto, it's still very orange. So you do need to go and adjust this sometimes. I'm basically working off the shirt. So I'm pretty happy with that now. Again, let's just go in and make some really quick basic adjustments. Again, not too much happening here, but again, reduce the clarity, increase the texture, but we're gonna go in and create more mood again with some other effects. So let's start with the tone curve again. This one, I'm just gonna create a nice S curve again, very similar to the last one. In fact, why don't we jump across to that edit and copy our settings just from the tone curve. I really like this is kind of added in a bit of contrast. It's kind of really darkened those shadows, made it a bit more moody in that sense and just added that slight bit of color to it as well. So again, next thing I wanna do is come down to color grading. So for this one, probably similar. I'm gonna add in a little bit of kind of aqua there, shift to bring it down, maybe about there on this one into the shadows. Mid-tones, again, a little bit of blue, slight shift towards aqua, just bring that down probably about there. And highlights, I'm going to add in, you guessed it, a bit of orange, almost yellow actually, but not too much, so about there. And again, probably a bit of greeny blue, almost aqua, maybe about there. If we turn it off, you can see again, we've just got this color cast appearing across the image, giving it that kind of tearly greeny look so let's go down to calibration again similar i'm going to just make some quick adjustments here again you don't have to do what i'm doing these are the colors i quite often work with so pretty happy with that jump back up to our overall colors again i'm just going to take some color out of the image i like that teal and orange look but i actually don't actually keep much blue in my image it's kind of very subtle as you can see so I might just bring that up a tiny bit, but I've taken a lot of blue out of it. I just want to make it a bit brighter. Come back to HSL, maybe tweak our colors just a fraction. Kind of happy there. Luminance, again, darken. Not really darken, but reduce the luminance of blue. Increase. I don't want to increase too much the orange there. And again, just to create increase that mood, I'm going to create a big vignette on this one. It just kind of, to me, makes it really kind of stand out. And I'm pretty happy with that edit. So there we have before, after. Let me just show you with the corrected white balance. So here we have before, just with the white balance and exposure corrected. And there we have our nice moody edit. So there we have some of my cinematic street photography editing. Please do check out my presets if you are interested. A lot of these effects are kind of there ready to go. So I hope you enjoyed this one. Please do subscribe to the channel if you did. Keep on creating and keep on going, my friends. I will catch you in the next one. Bye for now. Say sake. Say bye. Say bye to the YouTube people. <laughs>